Hi everyone, I'm Kat Sylvia and today I'm joined by Alexander Smith Good and morning. we are going to do some summer jewelry trends. This is going to be really fun. We have a very colorful table here today. So we're going to talk about some of our kits. We have some tassels. We have some sea glass. This is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some great techniques, some, some cool stuff that we kind of discovered recently. So yeah. Alexander's going to show you a really cool technique and I can't wait to try it myself. Yeah. So we're going to get to that. But why don't you guys come on in and take a look at our table we'll kind of run through a little bit of what we're going to be talking about here today. So like I mentioned, we do have some beautiful sea glass. Now, if you're a fan of Beta Halik, you know, this is a very recent launch for us. So we brought in some great new shapes and colors and styles. So this is really going to be fun here. We're going to be talking about some centerline stuff there as well. We have some Kumihimo and some kits here. And this is going to be great for utilizing, you know, summertime off. You know, you got some kits that you want to do. This is going to be great. Great. Staying inside if it's too hot. Yes, <laughs> staying in the cool air, hopefully. And then we have some beautiful Swarovski crystals, and these are some of those new delight. I, I just love this ocean one and the Laguna. I think those might be my two favorite new uh -huh. colors. It's really beautiful, bright and colorful. And then up here we have some more kits, and these are actually launching today. These are our June kits, so we're going to talk about those at length a little bit later. Uh, but we also have some beautiful tassels by Zola Elements. Is that right, Right. Elton? So we've got the, the long pagoda tassels and we've got these neat fanned tassels here. Also a lot of um, these Zola Elements acetate which we'll be talking a lot about um, and how well they're going with these stamping blanks up here. So we pulled a bunch of those for you to see, these metal stamping blanks. Um, also some other fun uh, metal elements by Zola and over here a couple of the mini kits which we'll go over as well, these beautiful long necklaces. Um, utilizing those. And then over in this corner we're going to go into a little bit of the textiles and the cords, different craft types of projects, um, rapid loom, kumihimo, macrame, always fun for summer. And so um, yeah, up here just a little more of the acetate which is the project that I'll be doing. So Hope you got a good look at everything on this <laughs> table to start. Yeah, and this is gonna be to... fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to this. We have some some neat little tricks and tips, like I said. Uh, you know, especially when it comes to summer jewelry. You know, the last thing I want to do is put on something really super heavy. So we're gonna be talking about how you can do some of the delicate jewelry. We have, like Alexandra was pointing out, the acetate, which is really nice and lightweight. And I'm always looking for a nice big pop of an earring, you know, because during the summer months, I tend, my hair goes up. My uh -huh. hair is too long, so it just goes up. <laughs> so I want something really bright and colorful on my ears, and the acetate is really, really fun to acetate, do. Acetate, the tassel, stamping blanks, mm -hmm. all of it. Yeah. yeah. So if you've joined us before, you know that we do a giveaway for each of our live classes. So let's go over the giveaway today. Now this is really fun. We are giving away some stuff that you can't actually get on Beta Halig. So this is some exclusive stuff here. So we are going to be doing some beautiful hemp cord. So you know when we talk about summer jewelry, I always love to kind of <coughs> use a textile when I can. So the beautiful hemp here is nice and colorful and that's a one millimeter cord and you're going to get all four colors there. And then we have some lovely tassels and charms. These are from Zola Elements, really sweet. And again, here is that beautiful large acetate piece. So you're going to get a pair. Maybe you want to make some earrings with those. You're going to get a nice little sun stamping blank. And then down here, we also have some great sea glass and some really fun seed beads and some cool colors. And these are uh, those etched seed beads that we have. So these are going to be really, really fun. And then as an added little bonus here, I wanted to give you guys a little travel toolkit. So this is a really simple box. and I'm just going to kind of open it up here so you can see what's inside. So inside here, you're going to get five different tools. So you're going to get, you know, your really typical tools that's great for travel. You're going to get that chain nose, that round nose. You're also going to get some nylon jaw pliers and some cutters. And then the other thing that you're going to get is you're going to get that jump ring mandrel here. And that's really fun. So you can make all kinds of different sizes of jump rings. Yes, I love that it includes that mandrel and also mm -hmm. the nylon jaw. That's an excellent Yeah. Size. And these little pieces in here, these are just plastic, so you can actually just take these out. So what's great about this is that you can uh, utilize the tools or you know you can use the box for something else for traveling. So this is gonna be great. So this is our giveaway today. So all you guys need to do is you just need to leave a comment. Hey, maybe let us know where you're going on summer vacation this year mm -hmm. or, or what your plans are. Are you wanting to learn a new technique? Let us know in the comments below so you could win this giveaway. So we are gonna announce the winner live at the end of our class and our class 
classes usually run about an hour or so, so stick with us. We are going to be going over lots of fun stuff. So are you ready to dive in? Ready. All right, let's do it. Okay, so my first project today is I wanted to create, I was actually sort of inspired by a different design of mine, so I wanted to do a different version of it. Um, so one of the things, one of the big trends that I see is you see these big hoops and you see that there's chain and tassels and charms and all kinds of fun stuff coming off of them. So it's really this long necklace and I have a design here that I did and this I did with the Swarovski pearls. So this is one of the designs here so you can just kind of see how it hangs. There you go. And I added some crystals and just a little pop of color down there to the bottom of it using those Gita findings. So as you can see on my table here, this is kind of what I want to achieve here. So I brought in some Swarovski crystals. I have some charms. I'm actually going to be using some acetate and this is that beautiful white pearl color. I kind of like it because it looks a little bit like a shell. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I was thinking is I always like to collect things when I go on my vacations and sometimes it is a little shell from a beach or you know maybe a little charm I picked up in a store you know or a little initial or something you know because I always want to have a little keepsake from each of my vacations but when it comes to actually like getting something I always go for something kind of small because I don't know I, I'm a carry-on girl I like to take my carry-on with me so I don't like big bulky bags so I like to have little things so I thought this would be kind of a fun little design idea to use maybe it's just some chain and some crystals and then I have this Moroccan chain up here and this is going to serve as my big focal up here at the top so I'm just going to have all my little charms and keepsakes happening down here and I chose a little bit of a larger hoop than the one from my initial design because I wanted to add a little bit more to it and this is one of those necklaces that you could also add on to. It's kind of like a charm necklace, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. like instead of a charm bracelet, it's a charm necklace. I love the concept. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I thought you, it was kind of fun. Put a little locket with a picture. Oh, that would be yeah. sweet. See, you can just keep building and building on this. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do here, and I want to talk about this. This is a Swarovski crystal setting for the 10 millimeter cushion stone, and I just love this air blue opal color. I just think it's so sweet, and it's just it's very marine like. Yeah. So I just wanted to set that really quick. So I'm going to do that, and so I can set it aside to dry mostly. So what we like to do is we like to use E6000 with most of our settings here. It just gives you a really nice bond and you don't need a whole heck of a lot of it. You're going to see how little I'm really going to use to secure that stone in there. All right. So I just put a little bit onto my post-it note. And then you can just use a little toothpick there. And I'm just going to get a little bit on my toothpick. And I'm just going to place it inside right in the center of that well and just kind of Smoosh it around just a little bit. There we go. And actually, I used a little bit too much. I'm just going to scoop a little bit out of there. There we go. Set that aside. And now I'm just going to place that stone in there. And what's going to happen is it's, all that glue is going to kind of smoosh around it. So you don't want to coat the entire inside. You'll get plenty. So I'm just kind of moving it around. There we go. And the reason I like this nice setting, you know, we do have the prong setting, so just so you can kind of see a little side-by-side -side comparison. So these are the prong Gita settings, so you can get that little style right there. Or you can get the sort of floating crystal style uh, by using one of the Swarovski settings that is going to fit that little 10 millimeter cushion stone. Nice. I'm so, thinking you options. could even add um, like a birthstone color. Ooh, that would be nice too. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we did um, some birthstone jewelry for Mother's Day, so, you know, let's say you wanted to kind of make this your own. You can do this with all kinds of different seasonal charms. But yeah, let's say maybe you have three kids, so you want three little crystals there and you can do Pretty. you can do that. So lots of fun little options. All right, so you can see that I've kind of started to make it as I want everything to be there. And one thing that I wanted to do is I liked the idea of the pearls, but I wanted to keep this a little lighter and just really silvery and pretty. So I went with some crystals instead. So I made some simple wire loops here. So let me show you guys how easy that is to do. All right, so I'm just going to take my little eye pin and I'm going to pick up one of my little crystals. It's smart to use an eye pin. I tend to always just cut lengths of wire and make both loops myself. Oh. <laughs> it just didn't occur to me to use eye pins. I was like, this is way. half the work done for oh, you. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to come in with some round nose pliers. And again, these are kind of still your very basic tools, so you don't need anything really heavy duty or specific. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend that wire back at an angle. And then I'm just going to kind of, I always kind of move mine in just because I want to be really sure that I'm, you know, at the same length. There we go. And wrap it up and over the top. So you're matching the size of your loops. Exactly. Yeah. And you'll see oftentimes what we'll need to do is we'll need to make a bigger loop on one side or a smaller loop 
to sort of accommodate either uh, another piece or a jump ring. So that is why the round nose pliers are great. All right, so there's my little simple wire loop. Super nice and easy. You can see that I've made some extras here. And I have these little star charms because what this is gonna actually save me by having a charm there is you could end it by doing a head pin at the bottom of one of these if you didn't wanna add an extra little charm. But I was like, well, I only have eye pins for right now, so I'm just gonna do only eye pins. So that's gonna save me a little bit. So I'm gonna sort of create another one of my little links. And let's go to this side here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda just bend that wire so it's open, just kinda the same way you would a jump ring. I'm gonna slip on that little star charm. Come on. <laughs> and I'm just gonna kinda, there we go. And just close that up. And just making sure it has a nice good closure. I don't wanna lose my charms. All right, so there's one. And now I'm just gonna take another one that I have here. I'm gonna open that loop the same way. Attach it to it and close it up. Now you can make all kinds of different little links here. Links, <laughs> link and length sound very similar. <laughs> um, so you can kind of see that I have like, you know, my little two on the side. This one has three, this one has four. You can make it really nice and long if you want. I'm gonna keep mine nice and simple though. All right, so now the easiest part is just, we're gonna kind of just use some jump rings to attach everything together. But I do wanna talk about something, and I actually got this question from a YouTube tutorial that I did. And the question was about using different sizes of jump rings within the same project for different purposes. And here's what I'll say to that. Absolutely, go for it. There's no one way to do it. I think sometimes for simplicity on our website, you'll see that we'll use like, you know, five millimeter, 20 gauge, and we'll just kinda make that work for everything. But the other thing I want you guys to think about is I've chosen a chain up here that is really, it's a little bit of a heavier chain, especially compared to the lighter, slim Rolo chain. You can just kind of see that side by side there. But the advantage that I have with this is that the loops, the holes there that I'm using are large enough to accommodate an 18 gauge jump ring. So I've done that here to support the weight of the top of this. So this is really where that weight is being taken at the top. And also I use it at the clasp because I want that to be really secure as well. Now, when it comes to the bottom here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch that over to using um, a 20, uh, excuse me, a 21 gauge six millimeter jump ring. So the size is the same, but the gauge is different. So you can hopefully see this on camera. I know it's really difficult, especially when there's silver here, but the 21 gauge is gonna be much thinner. Now what's gonna happen is this is gonna slip through this chain where the 18 millimeter did not. So I had to switch jump rings anyway. So I decided to go with the 21, but I wanted to stick with the six millimeter because this way I can be consistent because I have this large hoop that I need to get over. So otherwise I would have used maybe like a four millimeter or a five, but it doesn't quite fit over this, uh, the thickness of the hoop. So that's something to kind of think about. And when you guys are designing one of the things that I like to have on my desk at all times is I have my little variety pack. Now you can get these of course at beatholic.com, but what's really neat is you get all kinds of different sizes and you also get some split rings, you get some oval jump rings. There's a lot of applications where the oval jump rings are gonna look really nice and sleek, but this is just kind of a good thing to have. Maybe you wanna kind of create your own box of your own jump rings, your go-tos that you like to have on hand, but that way you kind of know and you can sort of change things up as to uh, what you're working with to make it really fit the design. But there's no, you know, designer thing that says you can't use, you know, different sizes of jump rings within the same project. I think that's, you know, go for what works best for the project. Right. Quick question for yeah. you about these variety packs. I sure. see that you have them in silver and then you have them in gold. Yes, I do. So one of each. Is there any variety pack we sell that has both colors of metal in one or they're just separate? Um, yes, actually we do have some that have uh, gold, antique brass, uh, gun metal. Nice. So if you kind of find yourself, you know, using some different metals, it's a great opportunity to just sort of have that on hand and go, oh, you know what? Instead of a, cause sometimes with an antique gold, an antique brass jump ring can actually look a little bit better than a bright gold. Sometimes the bright is too bright. Yeah. And, and that's one of those kind of judgment calls as you're designing, you're like, oh, it just kind of stands out as a little too bright, you know? So that's a good time to, have that little variety pack with you. It's like, oh, 
that works out nicely. Mm -hmm. And then same with um, stainless steel. I know people will sort of substitute in uh, gunmetal jump rings. That's very common too. You know, when you don't have a stainless steel jump ring on hand, it's a great little, oh, this will work. <laughs> so. Yeah, I like to mix the metals too. Sometimes gold and silver yeah. and all of it. Well, and you'll see in my necklace design that I'll talk yeah. about a little bit later, I, I, I love mixing metals. That's kind of a fun thing for me. Um, I like doing a mixed metals and then just like one little pop of color. Like you'll see I have like the gold and the silver and then the turquoise, mm -hmm. you know, or like gold, silver and amethyst. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so I'm going to start just kind of attaching everything. I'm just going to kind of go quickly here. But this is a great, like I said, this is a great little technique. Um, and, you know, I'm using the acetate. I'm using the little uh, Swarovski crystal there. And I have a little anchor charm. So, you know, just kind of use a variety of things. And yeah. this is just, just jump rings. So that's nice and easy. And all of these guys already have their little finish things off. So I didn't need to attach a jump ring to the, um, excuse me, to the simple wire loop there. Oh, and uh, another question that we get often is how long do I need to let the glue dry? Um, before you, like you can work with it. You can see that I'm clearly working with it and it's holding. Um, but I would recommend allowing it to sit for at least 24 hours before you try to wear it. Um, just, we don't want you to lose your precious crystals and, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I, I know I'll be walking along and someone's like, oh, didn't you have two earrings in? And I have no idea where that other earring got lost, you know, mm. and I would hate to have that happen to some of your jewelry that you've worked so hard on. <laughs> so, all right. So then the other thing is I'm just going to kind of go in order of my little pieces here and just attach them to the ring. This is going to be... It's gonna be fun. I like these. I like the crystals. Um, I also like these particular star charms. They're double-sided, so if you know things kind of get flipped around. Um, the only thing on this whole thing that isn't double-sided technically is my little crystal setting, um, but the acetate is. So that's a nice little swinging kind of kind of thing. You want things to be able to flip around a little bit. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you can also do this in gold. Uh, this is this would be a great thing to do mixed metals on. You know. Yeah. Have your, have your gold and your silver. Yeah. And I think this might be one of my favorite chains to work with, the Moroccan chain. You'll see it a lot in my designs on the website. I, love I just one. love it. You know, it just really, it really shines and it looks like these little metal balls. It's got such a nice weight to it because those beads yeah. are solid. Oh yeah, they are definitely solid. Yeah. yeah. So this is, this is it, yeah, this is fun. So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, some summer vacations. And oh, you know, I, I meant to uh, bring out some tips here because people always ask me, how do I travel with all my jewelry? Um, and I definitely utilize the anti-tarnish pads um, just with so much air. And you know, I'm often going to drier climates. I'll go to uh, Scottsdale and Phoenix and you know, I'll go to Las Vegas and, you know, it's really, really dry out there, um, you know, or especially if you're going to a place like Florida that's going to be really humid, um, carry those anti-tarnish pads with you and carry them in little plastic bags. I always keep things kind of individualized. And then I've also started to use, so, so you can get these at like any craft store. They have little paper straws and they're meant for drinking, but they're really great for separating your necklaces. Oh. And I wish I wish I had one here to demonstrate. Um, I'll kind of I'll walk you through it. Um, but that is how I keep all of my necklaces separated. So as you're traveling, that's one thing to kind of keep in mind is that you know you want to keep your jewelry looking really nice. That's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, and uh, while we're kind of on the topic of traveling and whatnot, um, please do not wear any of your jewelry in the pool or in the ocean. It probably will not look the same afterwards. Um, there are some cleaning techniques you can use with like just some dish soap or a polishing cloth, but don't ruin your jewelry, guys. Please don't do that. <laughs> um, I know it's tempting to kind of wear, you know, but even like suntan lotion and perfumes and stuff, yeah. they can really kind of wreck your jewelry. So we don't want you, we don't want you guys to have to do that. All right, so nice. here is the necklace. Nice. So that so, came together really quickly. Yeah. So I might adjust the, the length of, now that I'm seeing it, one thing I might want to do is I might want to kind of bring up one of my charms because they're kind of all clustered there at the bottom. So I might want to bring one of those up so it sits a little higher. But that's sort of one of those things that you can just sort of see as it happens. So let me try to lay this down so it will That turned out hopefully kind so of great. Out. I just love the Oop, concept. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, I know the camera's trying to follow me. Let me lay it down. There we go. But yeah, so it's just kind of a fun little thing and you just get this little spray of charms and 
I think it just looks really nice. And again, this is one of those things where you can personalize it. And you can also, let's say you had this design, you can switch out those little jump rings at the bottom if you wanted to, you know, change it out for you got 4th of July and you want to add some uh, like a red charm there. Well, there you go. Now you have your 4th of July necklace and you didn't have to make a whole new piece of jewelry. <laughs> So yeah, so that's just a fun little thing to do with um, some travel charms that you might pick up along your way. All right, so Alexander, you're gonna show us a really great technique with the acetate. Yeah, yeah, well let me talk a little bit about what's on the table here, just to yeah. show you the variety of these Zola, Zola Elements acetate pendants that we have, and it's a type of resin. And so some of them you'll see have one hole, some have two as connectors, different sizes, different shapes colors, really fun assortment. And what we've discovered is they go so nicely with these stamping blanks. It's kind of like a blank canvas to work with. And so over here, um, we've got these two mini kits that we're selling right now. These, they're called the Huntley necklace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're just so neat, clean, fun, go with anything. And the long, the long necklaces are great for layering um, summer dresses. So we've got those. And then up here on this form, you'll see a necklace that I Put together by making a couple of extra holes. This piece just had one hole and so with the tool I'm going to show you I made two to facilitate this Y design and so I was happy with how that turned out and up here on this taller form um, what I did was put a few extra holes into a stamping blank that started out like this and so I added three holes at the bottom to accommodate the hanging of these acetate bars. And so for the project I'll be doing here, I'm going to kind of do the inverse of that, where you'll see here on my pad, I've got one of the Zola Elements pendants, and this is the black pearl color. And what we're going to do is put three holes into the bottom of this teardrop using the Beadsmith two-hole punch. And traditionally this is used for metal, but the fun discovery for us was that it easily <laughs> punches holes into this resin. It's, it's a very forgiving, sort of soft, non-cracking material. So to begin with that, I'm going to bring in my caliper. And I, I really want to get um, a centered mark for my first hole to make sure it all uh, ends up even. So I'm going to set my piece on there. And using the edge of my caliper, I'm going to find the center down from that top hole. And using my Sharpie pen, I'm really going to take my time with this, by the way. So bear with me. <laughs> because I took a couple stabs in it and it just takes a little time to get it centered. So with my Sharpie, I'm going to make a mark where I want to put my hole at the bottom. That looks pretty good. Now with my caliper, I'm going to take up and measure about, I think, seven millimeters is a good spacing. And uh, what I'm doing, I should say, is making the companion earring to this one. Um, so this is what you'll see here that we're going to we're going to make. I and love the movement of that. Yeah, That's so it's sweet. got a lot of fun texture and, and movement. So um, once I've got my spacing there, again, I'm going to make another mark. And on the other side, again, just really taking, taking my time with it because you get one shot, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so. There we go. If you find that you end up with um, marks on your resin that you don't want to see, you can use the opposite side of the piece when you're done as the front of your earring. All right, so now I'm going to take that up and you'll see that this tool has two sizes. One is a 1.5 millimeter hole and one is a 2 millimeter hole. So for this piece, we're going to use the 1.5 millimeter setting. And when you screw it in, a little bar portion comes down that's going to punch that hole. And as I go down farther and farther, you'll see that this thicker uh, screw portion starts to intrude there. And that's what I don't want digging into my piece. So I'm going to get a soft vice grip on this just to make sure I get the placement right. And then I will get a firmer grip. So kind of using both hands and peeking in there, I'm matching up the bottom of the, the metal screw with the mark that I made. Again, bear with me. I really want to take my time and get it centered. Yeah, this can be tricky. So yeah, you just take your time, nice and easy. So once I get, once I get it in, I'm going to look over the top and see that I have that centered also over top. All right. So trusting my accuracy and 
hoping for the best, I'm going to start to <laughs> rotate this. And you'll see that it takes very little force, very little strength. And that's the, the advantage of this tool over, say, a, a metal punch that you would squeeze like a plier. Now, I feel the resistance there, and I'm going to come back up because it's made its, made its hole. Yeah, that probably would be better than a hole punch plier on these acetate, just because you kind of you don't have to deal with that snap that kind of oh, happens. Wonderful. Okay, so I got my center hole. I'm really happy with that. Lovely. So now I'm going to insert into one of the side marks that I made again, using one hand and holding with the other, squinting <laughs> to find my my sharpie mark in there. I think I've got it. I'm going to take a peek at the other side as well. I think that looks pretty good. All right. I've got my soft vice grip. I'm going to start to screw, screw down and make my hole. You make it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I practiced a few times. Well, I think, yeah, the, the trick with this really is the precision of that hole and just making sure that you're kind of taking your time. You know, don't rush it. Right. Well, on the website also, <clears throat> in the photograph for, for the, the piece, it's the tool, um, it shows a picture of leather. So you could um, practice on some full <coughs> leather, some thick um, cloth, say. Just practice making your marks and uh, punching your holes just to get a feel for it. Oh, that's so, a good tip. Again, I'm happy with that. I'm mm. going to take a double, double glance here at my measurement. Measure See twice, if I need once. to <laughs> make any adjustments to my previous hole, and I think, I think I'm getting lucky, guys. This is All going, right. <laughs> going really good. <laughs> oh, we have a question. All right, uh, going yeah, in for that. Wondering, uh, can you use uh, an alcohol pad on the acetate uh, pieces to remove the sharpie mark? Oh, sure. Um, so the question is, Andrea, is that right? Um, she is asking if you can use an alcohol pad on the acetate to remove um, any marks. Um, what I might try first, uh, the alcohol might be might be a, a bit harsh. You know what? We'll have to test that. I don't want to say yes or no right now. Um, something tells me you probably can. These are nice and sealed. It's not like you're going to rub off any, any color. It's going to be kind of like any other resin piece. So something tells me that you can. Right, um, we got it. <laughs> I just uh, maybe try just trying to wash it off maybe with like a little bit of uh, very mild dish soap at first. Um, that'll probably be a little bit easier on the piece. So you can just take that and just kind of wipe it off. You might also be able to kind of get it off with a, a little bit of a tissue, assuming it hasn't been on the piece for too long. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that okay. that should work. I don't want to say it does officially, but I think that should work. Well, just take a close in and see what's left of that Sharpie mark. And the advantage with this black pearl, obviously, is that it has black inclusions. So it kind of blends in, which is nice. That's true. <laughs> so my next step is going to be to take these 5 millimeter 22 gauge jump rings and I'm going to add on some of these 10 by 6 millimeter um, silver filled stamping blanks to create sort of some nice glisteny dangles on there. Now those are nice and lightweight too, even though they the, look like these well, big metal yeah, pieces. Yeah, the whole earring ends up being really lightweight and I've upgraded to um, some kind of semi-precious metals with the silver filled and some sterling chain and the advantage of these lightweight pieces is that you can really you can go all out with the metals and it doesn't cost uh, much more. That's nice, yeah. yeah. And you'll have a nice longevity to the jewelry. Right. Not that there's anything wrong with silver plating. We use that quite often. Um, just, yeah, if you go with the silver filled, that's nice. You know, that jump ring looks a little funky. I'm going to leave that one out. <laughs> and that's why we have hundreds. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'll just use my thumbnail to open a jump ring. It's a little easier than picking up my plier, <laughs> depending on the thickness and the stiffness. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the thicker it is, the harder that is yeah, to do, wanna... but sometimes with those uh, lighter gauges, you can do that. Yeah. All right, so I've got my third dangle on, and um, I'm glad. I'm so glad that turned out, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, all right. So the next step is just going to be to take some of this flat 2 millimeter cable chain, which I like the flat because of the, the shine of it, and I'm going to take my flesh cutters, bring in my ruler, and I'm going to measure an inch. That's going to be my longest length for this. And what I did for the cluster effect is I actually didn't measure beyond that. I just kind of went with some random lengths. I'm even going to need to count how many chains I put on there um, to make a match. So just hold that up with my, with my eye here, gauge that length. I got my inch. Whoops. And onto a jump ring. I'm going to slide that. 
and link and just start to make my chain cluster. And I bring on another end link a chain. It looks like I have a couple different sections here. So I'm actually going to slide on a few at a time. And after I've got them all hanging, I'm going to just, I'm going to eye it. Sometimes it's nice to just go with a, a kind of natural feeling of this mm, oblong cluster effect. So let me see how many I have. One, two, three, four. I've got five chains going. Yeah, sometimes that can help with like a nice little glistening four. design, make it kind of organic. I like that. All right. All right. And <clears throat> since I've got my jump ring open already, I'm going to go ahead and slide it onto my piece. And I'm also going to slide on the loop of my earring hook. I don't even have to open my earring hook, which is kind of nice. So I'll close that up. And once I have it all assembled, I know I'm going a little out of order here, but I'm going organic. I'm just going <laughs> to I'm going like to use it. my eye and clip. But you know what I did? I got it facing the wrong way. And what wow. I realized is, you know what I did? I, and I love that Kat did a video on this. I'm oh. going <laughs> to change the orientation of my ear hook um, to facilitate the, the frontward facing design of my earring. So just very gently, I'm gripping with my plier flat on that loop. And I'm ever so gently turning the earring hook so that it'll face forward for me. All right, so now I'm ready to attach it. And here, I think I will just angle that off to the side, make sure my chains are going to face off to the front the way I have my other earring. Oops, other way. There we go. And close that up. All right, so now I'm going to look to where I have my one inch cut. And I'm just going to bring my flesh cutters in and kind of take the liberty of just winging it. Just going <laughs> to wing it. I like it. Design as I go. I do want to get them one at a time, though. I was going to say, I see that you're moving up kind of one at a time. That's yeah. probably smart. <laughs> so I want some varied lengths and that natural look. It looks so delicate. Do, I love it. Do one more long one. Yeah, voila. All right. So now I've got my two earrings. Even holding both of them, they're just, they're really light. Kind of a fun design. It incorporates a lot of different, different elements in a fun, unique way. I like that. And yeah, you can see some of the other acetate pieces. We have those beautiful chandelier findings there on the Mermaid Cove earrings. Those are just really fun mm -hmm. to work with. Yep, just over so. to this side is an earring that Kat put together. And then over here, what did you do? You've got some patina. Yeah, so I did a little patina. I was inspired by the color of the year, which is living coral. Uh -huh. So we have this coral patina. So I wanted to put it on those little hammered coins. But then just to add that extra little something, I wanted to add in the acetate. Because I initially had just the silver circles with the patina on them on those earring posts. And I was like, you know, I just feel like it needs a little more graduation. And I wanted to go for something that was a little bolder. Um, and that, those ones there, they actually do come with two holes. So we do, like Alexandra was saying, we have some with the two holes and you know those are considered links and then we have the ones with the one holes and those are more pendants um, so we do have a lot of options there in terms of design right so again with these stamping blanks they offer a lot of variety here's an instance where uh, there were no holes in this square and so I put one on either side and again hung some acetate with that um, we're also seeing a trend in this shape right here, which is that half moon. And we mm -hmm. love that hammered finish on that. So this earring was fun to eat. just I threw it together this morning. And um, it actually, when you hold it up, it hangs off just a little to the side, but it doesn't bother me. Once I've I tried like it. it on, and because it mirrors the face, it's very flattering, very lightweight. Um, yeah, and it was just really a good use of tassels and a nice discovery there. Yeah, that is such a beautiful look when you can mirror the face like that. Because like I was mm -hmm. saying, you know, during the summer months, <clears throat> my hair goes up. So, you know, to kind of have that really nice shape to, yeah. to the face. You know, because we are making jewelry. We're designing. It's all about style. So that's a great, great thing. I love that. Yeah. All right. So all right. if you guys are just joining us, welcome. 
Welcome to our class. We are doing some fun summer jewelry, talking about colors and textiles and all great fun stuff. And if you are just joining us, I want to kind of give you a little quick peek at the giveaway here. So we did talk about it earlier today, so I'll go a little faster here. We are doing some great hemp here. We're giving you some lovely tassels and charms. You're going to get some of those acetate pieces that Alexander just worked with here. We have those large rectangle shape, and I love that. You're also going to get a nice little sun stamping blank. We have some sea glass for you to work with here, which I'll talk about more in just a moment. Mm -hmm. And then you're also going to get a great travel toolkit. So this giveaway is over $50. You can win it today by leaving a comment, a question, Question. Let us know where you're going on summer vacation or what your favorite pieces that you're looking at here today. So that is our giveaway. Very nice. All right. So one of the other summer things, um, before I kind of dive into the sea glasses, I want to talk about our brand new kits. Now these are um, exclusive Beautaholic kits. And what that means, guys, is that we have the exclusive design. These are our designs. These are our patterns. And what's great is it comes in a great little box for you guys. And you get the tools, the instructions, and we do a front to back video walking you through how to do every portion of uh, the kits so that you have you know, us guiding you all the way through. So these are the mosaic double wrapped loom bracelet kits and we have four different varieties. We do two in silver and we have these two in gold. I can't decide which is my favorite color. I really kind of like this uh, red, white, and blue. It's just such a, such a pretty style and I love the gold, but I think this one is might be one of my favorites. I called this one Sanibel. Love it that. just reminds me of the sands in Florida and just so pretty. It's a little bit of a warmer tone. And then we also have these two over here that are going to be a little bit brighter. We got some oranges and some great teals and purples. The Rabbit Loom is such a great tool. I remember when we first got it in a couple years ago mm -hmm. and you've come such a long way. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so fun. You know, I, I, I really didn't realize how versatile that tool was going to be. Uh -huh. I was like, oh, okay. So you make the single little wraps with the big beads. Like I get it, you know, but then we started to realize, oh, you can use the little tiny 11 ohm Miyuki Delicas with it. That's great. And then we started to incorporate the bigger beads in with mm -hmm. that. And then obviously these are the double wraps. So these use the Rapid Loom Pro, which includes two uh, tracks. So that's kind of cool. So you can see just how long this is. And it's a really nice, lovely wrap bracelet. And I'll try to kind of show you a little bit of sizing and like how that works. So yeah, so it's just really nice and delicate. And this is gonna be great for stacking jewelry. Yes. I know a lot of people do that during the summer. They just kind of get that arm full. And um, I just think these are gonna be really, really wonderful. And each has their own little pattern in there. So you can see that the pattern sort of changes. Um, so it's kind of organic style. It's not, you know, do this, get this, then do one and do one. And so it's, you know, there's a lot of different things kind of happening in with the pattern there. Always and they all have their own little buttons. buttons. I was just going to say. I know, say. I was like, I love the little buttons. They're different on everyone. So the cool thing is, is that we actually do have the full kits, which include everything you need to create this, including the leather, the seed beads, the beads, the, the silk, the button, all that good stuff. Um, plus the rapid loom and the glue. Now, if you already have some E6000 and you already have your rapid loom pro, what you can do is you can purchase the refill kit. And the refill kit is gonna be all of your beads, your cord, and all that good stuff. It just won't include the loom or the glue. So that way, if you already have that stuff, you don't need to pay for it again. <laughs> so we've kind of broken out the kit for you so that you can, you know, pick one and then hopefully pick another color and pick another color and pick another color um, that you love to make. So this is a great little summer project. It's really super simple. It comes with a nice little twisted wire needle on the end of it. So it's really easy to string on those beads. So if you're like, oh, how do you get the Miyuki's on the thing? It's, it's, uh, it's all there. Don't worry about it. We well, got you. Your videos are always so fantastic. Oh. <laughs> Anybody can watch that and do it. Yeah. <laughs> They're fun. You know, it's it's a really fun thing to do. And, you know, speaking of kind of more summary kits, we see a lot of memory wires. So these launched in May. So these are um, on the website as well. And they just come in some beautiful summer colors. So we have these really nice sort of, again, we get that stacked look. That's a huge trend that's still happening. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, those are very popular. Mm -hmm. And now what about these? Uh, Kumihimo are another kit? Yes, those were those were the previous ones. So these, uh, again, I was inspired by that color of the year. So you can see that little pop of coral in there. But these are 12 warp Kumihimo. So these are nice little spiral bracelets. So you can see, again, we have four varieties, our two gold and two silver. We like to hit everybody mm -hmm. um, with our color palettes. Um, but these are really, really fun. If you've enjoyed eight warp Kumihimo, this is a 12 warp. So it's gonna be a little bit different. So you can 
can see there's that little spiral pop that's happening with that gold bead, especially right in this one here. Uh, so that is a really, really fun kit. And of course we have our loom kits as well. So lots of fun summer kits uh, for you guys to take a look at. We have lots of fun colors. Also, hey guys, if you're looking over our kits and you're wanting to see something or you're, uh, you know, maybe we make a project and you're like, hey, I really wish that was a kit. Maybe in this color, let us know. We listen to those and you know, I have to say this orange, purple and pink one, this, uh, this came to us from someone out there. They were like, oh, I really love all those colors together. And I was like, really? <laughs> and then we kind of put it together and I was like, okay, I see it, I like it. So this <laughs> orange, pink, and purple kind of combo, it's so bright and funky. And you know what? It's totally not my color palette. I would have never thought of that. Right. So I'm so glad we got the suggestion to do that. So it was really, really fun. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have some ideas, let us know. You might see it in a future kit one day. I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> All right, so I wanna talk about some sea glass. So I have some great projects that are down here. So you guys can kind of see just some of the different varieties of the things that we've done with the sea glass. We have some strung pieces here. This piece here uses some simple wire loops. It's spaced out with some of that Zola chain. We also did some wire wrapping here. And this I wanted to point out because I used, again, that little Gita setting with that lever back earring, but just did a nice little messy wire wrapped briolette at the top of that. And these are the seaside princess earrings. I thought these were so sweet. I think I'm gonna make them in a couple of different colors. Uh, kind of a shiny but, chic. Yeah, and you know what's funny is that someone asked me um, if I would do these for a bridesmaid. And I was Perfect. like, absolutely. Um, so, cause we do have some other colors other than that purple there. And then we also have some beautiful flat pieces here. And this piece, it doesn't look so great on the table, so I'm actually gonna put it on. I'm just, I'm just gonna wear jewelry. <laughs> um, but this is really fun, cause it kinda goes around the wrist there, so you get that nice little focal of sea glass. And then the curvature of this cork, and again, this is bringing in those textiles, this braided cork really fits the back of the wrist really nicely. So this is one of those pieces that I think is just really fun. This would go with a great little summer dress, but it's nice. Nice and sort of, you know, just a little sea glassy. Yeah, so I like that one. Beachy islandy. Yeah. So it kinda kinda looks a little weird when you when you put it down. It kinda looks like a little, you know, D or a U or something. So I was just like, I just want to put that one on for you guys. <laughs> Alright, and then we have some more colorful ones here. And I just want to point out some of the more saturated colors. So this is still sea glass here, this orange. Uh, so it's just gonna be that really, really rich. And then we also have the white ones here as well. This is again, sea glass, but they sort of look very, very like found little pebbles. I kind of right. like that. So let's talk for just a minute. What mm. is the sea glass? Cause we call it cultured sea glass. Sure. And so what does cultured mean? Is that the tumbled effect? It is the tumbled effect. Um, it's also because these are, you know, man-made sea glass. Right. So sea glass is kind of an old thing that used to happen when, uh, sadly, people would leave their bottles at the beach or factory dumps. I know, yeah. and yeah, you know, so they. But what would happen is over time they would sort of get tumbled by the ocean and the sand, so they would turn into like these sort of little pebble-like things. Like you're probably used to seeing more organic shapes that would probably come out looking like that because it was just chunks of a bottle you know so oftentimes when people think of sea glass they think of like the blue or the greens because that was like the colors of the bottles or you think of that white um, which is usually a clear bottle that's just been tumbled and etched you know kind of over time um, but yeah so now it's become such a big trend and they've been able to kind of do it in shape so we call it cultured sea, sea glass because we've actually been able to sort of make them into beads and and kinds of other things as well so um, while these are not you know from the ocean mm -hmm. they are cultured um, but you still get that beautiful look and you know we've been able to do some different colors with this as well like I said that really rich orange uh, we also have some beautiful teals like rich rich teals and greens so it's really I like working with it. it you know we did get a question if it was lightweight or not but they're still glass so they're not super lightweight they're not going to be as lightweight as say like the acetate but they're going to be really really nice to work with so yeah. I like them yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but they are glass, um, they are glass beads. So yeah, so this this design here, this uses two really big focal pieces. And you can see that I put these on a post. These are the starboard earrings. I put these on a post because these are a bit heavier. I wouldn't want to have them on a little earring hook here. So that was one thing I did. And then I have this other little design here. And this I just thought was really fun. Again, like I said, summertime, my hair goes up. Um, mm -hmm. So I did this really long one here with just that little orange pop at the bottom because I just wanted something really delicate uh, just to go with some other sea glass pieces I've been working on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so speaking of lighter weight, mm -hmm. uh, 
really quick and easy earring that I did a video for were these. Oh, yeah. And the fun thing about this is when you buy the supplies for these earrings, it includes a Sea Life assortment by Tierra Cast with six charms. And so you can actually make three different pairs of earrings by mixing and matching however you want. I love that. I and mean, you know, I love the idea of mix and match earrings. I think that's really fun, especially, you know, it's summer, it's fun. You know, you, we also ha we have the other four charms over here. So if you just want to kind of take a look, so there's some other little sea sea life charms there. So those are the other four that you can get in that variety. So it's just really fun. I mean, why not? Say you want to do the seahorse and the dolphin. I think that's great. Mm. You know, there's no rules. It's design. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do a little quick sea glass earring here. And I was inspired to do something because I was like, oh, you know, I, I really want to get back into chain mail, but I just don't have the, uh, the time at the moment. I do want to get back into it though, but I thought it would be kind of fun to do a little faux chain mail sort of happening here, a little two and two with my sea glass pendant. First of all, I love that red. Oh, isn't that great? So that's what I mean. Like you can really get those nice colors here. Yeah. So again, we're kind of going to going to talk about jump ring sizes one more time here. So what I want to do here is I'm going to be using a 422, which is this guy here, and a 521. So this is going to help kind of accommodate that. But watch how this sort of creates a little faux chainmail look. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take that five millimeter, just going to open that up and slip it onto my sea glass. Now I can't get two jump rings into that little hole there, but I can on the other side of it. So I'm gonna do two jump rings that are the five millimeters. I'm just gonna open that up. And I'm gonna slip one on. And I initially, when I was first starting this, I was like, oh, maybe I'll just do just one jump ring all the way up and just kind of make it like a little chain. And then I realized that I could double these up and it just gave it just that extra little look there. So I'm doing a jump ring in the same direction, same everything as the one I just added. So this is sort of that really basic two and two chain mail. So now to change it up, because now I don't need to accommodate that size anymore, I'm gonna move on to the smaller jump rings here. So I'm gonna be using some four millimeters. Okay, so you're graduating a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So I'm gonna now loop it onto both of those little jump rings there and close that up. And this is just jump rings. This is something that you can do with a lot of things. Just let's say you're trying to extend something or, you know, um, one of the other thoughts here is that, so these are 422s, which means they're really thin gauge. So if you're trying to maybe extend a necklace, you could do this technique as well if you have thin gauge jump rings, because you're kind of doubling up the weight distribution that's happening here. So that's another little, little tip there as well. All right, so I have another one. So again, I'm gonna stick with the fours and I'm just sort of looping them. So you can see that I'm doing two and two and two and two. So I'm just gonna loop and do one more here. And you can go as high as you want. You can do more, you can do whatever you want here. So I'm gonna do two sets of these. And then what I'm gonna do, making sure you're catching only the jump rings you wanna be catching. All right. And now when you look at this, let me kind of try to get it in my pliers there. When you look, I have my earring hook, or excuse me, my earring post that is facing the same way. So once you are at that point, you just need one more jump ring to attach that together. So again, I'm gonna use the small jump ring. You could go back to the large jump ring if you wanted to. I'm gonna stick with the little small guys here for that nice little graduated kind of mirroring the shape of the teardrop. And then I'm just gonna slip that on. And close that up. So there you go. So that's a little little faux chain mail. There's not a whole lot to it, but these earrings, it just gives it just that little something extra there. So you can just kind of see from the side, just a little little chain like. But hey guys, that's just jump rings. Yeah, that's very it. Nice. So very super nice. simple. Now, something All right. you said about mm -hmm. um, whole size jogged my memory of uh, something I wanted to add about um, the acetate and the drilling sure. of the acetate. Okay. Um, so over here in this necklace, I wanted to point out um, a whole size that I was able to change using the two millimeter um, side of the beadsmith two hole punch. And so using the left side, I came over over to this necklace here, and I actually went over the pre existing hole. Uh, which was smaller and I made it bigger. And then for each of the other two, I made those two millimeter holes. And that was to accommodate this thick textured, I think it's 17 
um, gauge jump ring by Nun Design. I thought that added um, a hmm. neat a neat visual. So um, that that was just something I wanted to add. Was oh that absolutely you can always do that. Yeah, just kind of expand the whole size. That's yeah. that's a good tip too. Yeah. yeah. All right, so get your last comments in. I have one more little tip I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, but get your last comments in to win our giveaway. Uh, like I said, Brian's behind the camera there, and he's going to let us know who is our winner today. Um, so go ahead. Last little comments. Uh, any last little questions you guys have? If you want to see something again, if you want the camera to kind of pan over one more time, we'll definitely uh, talk about that. But I have one last little tip for you guys, and this goes back to the sort of stacking and layering necklaces. And again, <laughs> I end up with them tangled up all the time, especially when I'm traveling too. So I have a little tip here. So this is a trio of necklaces that I made with the brand new Zola elements. And this kind of goes back to what we were talking about at the very top of the class with, you know, doing uh, some mixed metals. So you can see that I did the gold and the silver. And of course I have my little pop of turquoise. I love that. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use a tube clasp. Now these are really fun. So this one has three holes. We do have them in, you know, fours and fives, et cetera. But this one is kind of cool. So this has the little spring in it. You can see that nice little spring. But these also come in a magnetic style. So if you're just, you know, because this is going to go behind your head. So okay. if you just need to kind of have that little magnetic. You about magnetic. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. So the great thing about this is what we're going to do is, so I have, this is my longest one here with the moon. This is my middle one with the cross. And this little turquoise one here, this is the shortest one here. So what I'm going to do is let me kind of move these aside is I'm gonna come in, and you can do this with any necklace that you already have, or let's say you're making a new trio. So what you can do is you can just take your little lobster clasp, and I'm just gonna hook it onto oh, my little side there. And then, I made this necklace, so I know that this is an open jump ring, but let's assume this is a necklace that I bought. So I'm just gonna take some other jump rings here, and I'm gonna take a nice 16 millimeter, or excuse me, 16 gauge, uh, six millimeter jump ring, and I'm just gonna hook that on and hook it on and close it up. Oops. Well, that Ooh. latching of the lobster claw in there is perfect. I, I yeah. wouldn't have guessed that was what you were gonna do. <laughs> yeah, um, so I mean, you can, you can make a, more of a permanent style one, but I'm just gonna do this and I'm just gonna hook on that lobster clasp and then do the same for all three of these. Now this is a great little thing. Um, I don't know if you're gonna wanna bring tools with you on vacation, but you can switch things out this way nice and easily. Uh, if you want to kind of go, oh, I wanna wear this middle necklace this time, you know? So you're really only doing, th I mean, to switch this out, guys, it's three jump rings, so it's really super simple. Um, you could also do this, let's say you didn't wanna bring tools. Instead of jump rings, you could do split rings, and those are gonna be very similar to like, um, a style that you'll do for like a keychain or something. That's kind of what a split ring is. I could show you what that is in just a second if you're curious. But yeah, but this is just a great little little thing that I, you know, stumbled upon and I thought this was just a really great way to keep your necklaces from getting super duper tangled. You know, it's just yeah. I so a good tip. Well, I know you did a, a Facebook live some time back about layering necklaces. Mm -hmm. And that's full of great tips like this too. Yeah, so, and then you'll have all of your necklaces separated here for you. So you can just kind of see how that works. And then, yeah, so then you're all set to go. They're just, everything is nice and separated. Hopefully you can kind of kind of see that in my hands there. Yeah. yeah, so that's just a really fun thing. And then you just have one clasp at the back and then you're good to go. Perfect. So yeah, so that's a that's a great little thing to do. All right, we do have one more question. Uh, yeah, Kathy, going back to widening holes, uh, they were wondering if uh, you have any additional tips for making holes wide, wider without breaking your beads. You got it. All right, so Kathy's question is about widening the holes, like Alexandra was just talking about, and how can you do that without breaking the beads? It depends on the material. I would say with the acetate, it's pretty forgiving, and I've had a good experience with getting as close to 1 16th of an inch um, against the edge of the piece, and it, it doesn't give any sign that it's gonna, gonna crack on me. So with the acetate, I think you're good to, to get close to the edge. Um, and so other, other materials like glass, wood, I'm not sure about. 
Wood, um, you could probably, be, wood again might be a little bit forgiving. Um, if you're trying to widen a bead, we'd recommend using like a diamond awl if you're doing like a wood bead because you can kind of file the inside of the wood. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes like with wood beads, they'll just have a little gunk inside them, just some little, you know, sawdust shavings. Yeah. So you can so just kind of poke those through. This is really only designed for flat, flat surfaces, mm -hmm. like blanks, um, yeah. even faux leather. Um, if you're trying to widen um, a glass bead, please be very careful. That's very easy to crack. And, mm -hmm. and also, I, I hesitate to kind of shave down any glass or crystal um, with one of those like diamond files. Um, that can be a, a little little tricky, so you might be a little stuck in those right. situations. Well, I will say that the, the sea glass has a pretty generous sized hole. Um, it does. For instance, in these marine layer earrings, I mm -hmm. put those I think there are two, three millimeter um, silver beads in between to kind of anchor my beads because the holes were large enough. Yeah, so you can see here, um, hopefully it's coming up on camera, that those holes are nice nice and large, yeah. 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 So, all right, so yeah, so we've talked about kits and sea glass and a little bit of kumihimo. We have some yeah. great textiles over there. Don't forget paracord is a great thing to use for summer. And yeah. crafting hemp. in the summer is mm -hmm. always fun. And yeah, with our with our kits, with our mini kits, it's a great way to either learn a new technique or just throw together a really quick and easy project. Our mini kits are great for that. Yeah. Um, so be sure to check that out at beetaholic.com. Everything you see here is in our product collection and there's even more stuff that we're gonna be coming out. This is just the tip of the iceberg of summer. It's not officially even summer yet. So right. we're just getting you guys prepared for it. Yeah. So yeah, so this has been amazing. So thank you so much guys. And do we have our giveaway winner? Fantastic. All right, so congratulations to Carol uh, Cisneros Witt. I hope I said that right. Cis, Cisneros? Cisneros. That, it sounds so exotic and pretty. I like that. <laughs> so Carol Cisneros Witt, I hope that is how I say your name. All you need to do is give us um, a little email at service at beetaholic.com. That's our customer service. So just let us know where we can ship your beautiful prize. Congratulations. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you're headed somewhere fabulous this summer. So enjoy your vacations, guys. Bring your projects with you. And we will be back here next month. We do these classes every first Friday of the month um, throughout the year. So if you guys have a suggestion for a class or a great technique you want to see, or if you want to see any of our previous live classes, those are all archived for you over at beetaholic.com. So and I wanted to say just send pictures of what you make. I, I really want to see. So how do they do that? Okay, so you can do that on our Facebook page, actually. So we have a customer gallery. So if you guys have even made one of our kits or made something else or, you know, maybe taken one of our designs and made it in a different colorway, let us know. Send us a little photo or and just your name and, hey, like, you know, you can share my photo. We'd love that. So, yeah, so we have a great customer gallery. So be sure to head, check that out. There's um, a lot of great inspiration pieces, too. You guys are really amazing. We're, <laughs> we're constantly amazing amazed. So yeah, so that's a great tip. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, guys. We will see you back here at the first Friday of July. <laughs> All right. Have a great month, everyone. Bye. Bye.